here, hello and welcome back. And today I want to talk about this, the QGEAM Thunderbolt 4 Adapter Max version, otherwise known as the T4802. This is an affordable Thunderbolt 4 docking station and it allows you to bung on and attach a multitude of different appliances up to apparently 16 ports. But before we go any further, why is this on the channel? Why exactly have I got this here when, frankly, I don't own a single Thunderbolt 4 device? Well, come behind the curtain with me a moment and let me tell you a few things. Now, I like to update a lot of the hardware that I use for these videos, for the reviews, periodically. Normally about once every six months or so. I do a quick refresh of things that I haven't updated for a year or two, and then I update them and future-proof a little bit towards further videos, further articles, that sort of thing. And when I was getting to the point with a docking station I've been using for quite a long time, which was a Thunderbolt 2 docking station, was looking a little bit old, I'd started looking at different devices. Now, generally, when I try to update things, it falls into two categories. One, I, of course, go out and purchase these items. The second one is sometimes I get things sent to me for reviews that afterwards, rather than sitting pretty in the background, get worked back into my ecosystem. They get used for further content, they get used for testing, and ultimately, a lot of rev you know brands and reviews will send products so that later on, when I do a test, a Thunderbolt test or a 10GBE test, that their products are on screen. It's one of those unspoken reviewer type agreements. And most of the websites that you, or YouTube videos that you follow and watch, they use this kind of built into the methodology of how they make uh, content. But in the case of this docking station, 24 hours before I knew this thing existed, I was looking around for a replacement dock so I can run my editing setup. I've got uh, an additional monitor that I connect into my laptop. You might have seen it. It's the one with Dreamcast splattered on the back of them because I'm a loser. And I was looking at a replacement docking station. And then these guys messaged me in the comments and asked, do I want to review their product? And frankly, a little bit of me went, well, if it's any good, I'll be able to use it in my reviews. And if it's not very good then I can say on camera that it's terrible, and then I don't have to use it, and I can go out and buy the dock that I actually wanted to get. So today's review is about talking about the hardware inside this. The second part of this review is when we're going to be testing this on my setup. We're going to be set up with my monitors. We're going to be doing everything connected together just to see how well this runs in my Thunderbolt 3 laptop so I can be future-proof for the future and help you decide whether you're going to go for a Thunderbolt 4 dock now, even though Thunderbolt 4 isn't really everywhere right now. Which leads me to another point. Why isn't Thunderbolt 4 everywhere? When we talk about Thunderbolt, the evolution from Thunderbolt 1 to Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 were these big steps everyone saw and everyone jumped on board with. But Thunderbolt 4, on the other hand, even though it has started arriving in a multitude of places, it hasn't really taken the world by storm. And one of the biggest reasons for that is because the most common benchmark that people tend to measure these things by, the performance has changed precious little. The performance of Thunderbolt 4 is 40 gigabits per second, the same as Thunderbolt 3. Now, Thunderbolt 4, which a lot of people refer to as Thunderbolt 3.5, is more of more um, uh, width than it is breadth. It allows a lot more internal bandwidth, a lot more in terms of power connectivity. It also allows a greater deal of the throughput within and how it's handled, particularly in the form of 8K. Now, if we unbox this, it's going to be very, very brief. Inside, we've got the external packaging. Uh, we have the unit itself. We have the instruction manual. We have a cable, which we are going to talk about later on. And we have our external power cable there. Now, if we put that over there on the side, do you know what? We'll chuck that there, wallet, so we don't lose track. We'll get onto the docking station itself in a moment. But again, we've got our paper instruction manual there, and it's actually surprisingly detailed. It's color, it's glossy, it gives us lots of information on first time setup, detailing what works together at its best degree. Not a terrible manual, and I'm kind of glad they've included this. It's not multilingual, it's only in English, but there's a lot of information in there for us to get this set up the first time. Next thing, external PSU. There are clips for attaching this into your own network there. So again, all the way in. And as PSUs go, it's quite beefy. I think it is a 120-watt yep, external PSU there. Now, bear in mind that Thunderbolt 4 
and the architecture of this system. It allows, um, at least via this system, 60 watt plus an additional 15 watt across the ports for powering to connected devices. And the other thing worth bearing in mind is the fact that it also arrives with da -da 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 -da, a Thunderbolt 4 cable. Now, this is important because Thunderbolt 4 cables, they look near enough identical to Thunderbolt 3. Indeed, when you look at them, the only main difference is they've got a 4 slammed there on the, uh, the label there. They're also USB-C. So why would you not, why am I caring? You know, Thunderbolt 3 cables are out there. You get a better performance over distance with a Thunderbolt 4 cable. Thunderbolt 4 cables are able to maintain the performance as well as support more features internally than Thunderbolt 3. And right now, a lot of people may have already said this, and I'm going to just jump onto the bandwagon. If you're replacing cables in your Thunderbolt setup, whether you're using Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4, make sure you get a Thunderbolt 4 cable anyway. It's future-proof, and the benefits of them are even felt in Thunderbolt 3 protocol as well. So having one of those included, even if it is not exactly an earth-shattering length, is still pretty handy indeed. But let's have a little look at this device itself. So let's remove our weird paper covering there. And there is the QG Thunderbolt dock there on screen. Let's try and get the lighting there. And again, as docks go, this has got a lot going on inside. It's a double-sided connection there all the way through. And going through all the ports one by one is going to take a while. So let's crack on with that. Let's go with probably the most important one of all, Thunderbolt 4. The system has four Thunderbolt 4 ports. We have three of them on this side here, as you can see. One, two, three. And then on the other side, we have an additional Thunderbolt 4 port. Now, do bear in mind... One of these ports is clearly going to be used to connect this to your host system. So even though it has four ports, realistically, it's only got three because you're going to be using one to connect to your Mac or Windows system there. Now, these Thunderbolt 4 ports, once again, 40 gigabits per second each, which is always good to know. Um, and again, you've got that cable included, but only the one cable there, so do bear that in mind. Um, there is a power button that's a little bit light. I'm not a massive fan of that button. It's not really click in, click out. It's more of a response button rather than an actionable one. We've got that big old heat sink there at the top. It's acting for heat dissipation and there's a ventilation based just around the edge of that device. You can just make that out all the way around. Now, we talked about the powering there. It can deliver 60 watts of power and an additional 15 watts of power uh, via the ports. Uh, the Thunderbolt 4 connectivity there, this system has the internal uh, transfer rate to provide um, a 30 frames per second 8K visual output. And I know you're thinking, 30 frames per second? Trust me, for something like this at this price tag of between $269 and $299, that's still pretty darn good. Now, if you're not on the 8K bandwagon yet and you're still utilizing 4K, um, and I say still like it's not sodding brilliant, which it is, um, 4K on this device, you can run up to um, four 4K outputs on this over 60 frames per second. Again, do bear in mind that you might be utilizing one of these Thunderbolt ports for your connection to your host system, but on it you have got uh, those USB-C Thunderbolt 4 cables there. You've also got um, an HDMI out there, which is a 4K 60 frames per second HDMI 2.0 connection. You've also got DisplayPort there as well, a 4K DisplayPort. Ultimately, it means that you can connect this right there in the middle of your desk to your Thunderbolt laptop or MacBook or whatever, and then connect three independent monitors. You can also connect the K uh, KVM, keyboard video mouse out there. So you've got those two USB ports. Now, it is worth highlighting, these are USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, which, on the face of it, given that you've got all those USB-C ports there, which are already going to be outputting USB, having USB 3.2 Gen 1 here at 5 gigabits per second is a little bit underwhelming, but still, it's better to have them than not have them at all, particularly legacy Type A connections, of course. But again, I'm kind of surprised that even via those uh, USB Type-C ports, you can't get USB 3.2 Gen 2 conventionally on those. There's also a couple of USB 2 ports there. Once again, those are going to be your KVM ports rather than your storage. And on the back here, we can see an Ethernet port as well. Now, remember, all of this with your host system is utilizing and going to be connected via that single Thunderbolt 4 port there. So although you've got 16 different kinds of connectivity on this device, Bear in mind that ultimately it's still going to be funneled via a single Thunderbolt 4 port. So utilizing all of them 
there's going to be some bandwidth sharing that I think is going to be problematic to someone that's thinking they're going to use all of these. This is about provisioning back and forth to your setup as needed. For me personally, what this is going to be doing is sat there connected to my editing desk. So when I take my laptop on the go, when I'm writing or, you know, I'm on off site somewhere, when I come back, I put it down, I connect it via the Thunderbolt cable into this dock. And then from there, I'm now plugged into my editing station with my keyboard, my mouse, my multi monitors. So again, that's my personal setup. I wouldn't use the Ethernet on this for two reasons. Uh, because one, I'm already going to be using Wi-Fi 6 in my office, but also because it's one GBE. This one GBE port here is a bit of a shame. We're seeing lots of innovations in Thunderbolt to 10 GBE. Um, Quant uh, Quantia produce a great line of affordable 10 GBE to Thunderbolt uh, controllers there. And this is only being one GBE, not even 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. It's a little bit underwhelming there. Now, once again, I understand that there is an argument that because we're utilizing the host connected um, via Thunderbolt 40 gigabits per second port there, that provisioning a potential saturation of a thousand megs on an ethernet port would be problematic but i would still rather have the feature than not have it at all there are docking stations out there that feature 10 gbe and a bunch of other ports as well and maybe they've prioritized the visual aspects of this device on connectivity in those ports rather than you know bumping up a 10g but i wish there was a 10 gbe port on this or again or at least 2.5 gigabit ethernet there now you may also have noticed We've got SD card reader slots there. Once again, I will take this camera and I'll connect the memory card slot into my docking station and then boom, I'm ready on my setup there. Now my laptop, my previous laptop, had an SD card slot on there, which was super handy. My new one doesn't. For some reason, more and more laptops are coming out with fewer and fewer ports, hence the necessity of docking stations. Now I get they want to remove USB ports. I kind of get that. But removing the SD card slot, it takes up no space. It's in a, you know, it's inoffensive it takes up a hardly or none at all pci bandwidth i just i'm very surprised that modern laptops i keep looking at mine off camera there do not have sd card slots as much as they used to and that's one of the other reasons more and more people are using docking stations because if you're using your gopro you're using you know your high def camera your dslr or something to do your work and you've got your laptop you've got your macbook under your arm you've gone off you come back having a docking station is becoming now not just a nice little extra it's becoming a necessity as modern portable laptops that are prioritizing you know battery life and efficiency are having fewer and fewer ports so this device kind of covers every single port i am going to need long term there's even audio in and out you've got your microphone and your earphones covered so ultimately I can't really fault the hardware inside this. I've already unpacked it and connected it. I know it works on my Windows Thunderbolt 3 laptop, but that's about it really. I am gonna be testing this out on my own personal laptop and editing setup just to see if it can be the proof of the pudding. Perhaps it's something I'm just gonna send back to the reviewers, or this is something you're going to see regularly in future videos. Right now, I hope it can live even up to three quarters of the expectations I have for it. As docking stations go, uh, again, between $269 and $299, it's really hard to argue with that amount of connectivity and being Thunderbolt 4. And late this year, with QNAP's new 4 bay Thunderbolt NAS arriving on the horizon there, the TS-464, as well as improvements in other Thunderbolt 4 peripherals arriving in the last two quarters of this year, I have hopes for this, and I really hope that when we have this set up, it really proves itself in the testing. But for now, let's finish up the hardware review of this for our next video so we can get things set up and testing this bad boy out. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. There's links in the description to this device from the brand, of course, so you can check those out if you choose to. I like it, but again, I'm holding full the reservation for later. Click like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to learn more. These things support and help us here on the channel make more videos. Otherwise, there's free advice section at Nas Compares, and otherwise, I will see you next time.